In the crisis overseas, hundreds of thousands of people are still leaving Ukraine. They are crossing the borders for safety in other countries. Airbnb is now looking to help the refugee crisis. It will offer free housing to people fleeing to safety. The CEO of the company sent letters to the heads of Hungary, Poland, Romania and Germany offering to help with housing. Of course, the images are horrifying. As the war in Ukraine is playing out, the video is especially troubling for children. Well, joining us now to talk about it is Dr. Ashley Zucker, a psychiatrist at Kaiser Permanente of San Bernardino. Thanks for your time today, Dr. Zucker. Thank you so much for having me. But you know, it's tough for many adults to deal with on their own, much less children. Should parents bring it up or wait until the children ask questions? It can be really helpful for parents to bring it up first. Uh, sometimes kids are afraid to ask questions or not sure what to ask. And so when parents kind of open that door, it can be very valuable for kids to know that it's a safe space for them to ask questions. So I usually recommend that parents do in fact bring it up first. So doctor, if parents do that, how should they approach that topic with their young ones? Is there a time and a place to do it? Absolutely. I think, you know, like you mentioned, us as adults, we're very affected by what's going on. And so if we're very tired, if we're very distressed at the moment, it's probably not the right time to have that conversation. We want to be able to be in a, you know, a good headspace to be able to talk to our children. And so making sure you also have the time to have the conversation uh, so that you're not rushing things, particularly with younger kids, it's probably best to have that conversation earlier in the day or not close to bedtime, just in mm -hmm. case it does lead to problems with sleep for them. Oh, good point. Uh, Dr. Zucker, seeing all the children uh, running from the bombings or sleeping in subway stations, it's tough on our own kids. And let's face it, a lot of kids, especially if you live here in Southern California, you see people sleeping on the streets or underpasses. I'm sure they ask questions, but can we make them feel that they are safe in their own homes after seeing the images overseas? Absolutely. It's incredibly important that kids do feel safe. Uh, and that's one of the priorities of having these conversations with kids. By opening that door to the conversation, we actually know that that can decrease their stress and also leads to a conversation about how children are safe um, and that the war, while very, very painful, is far away and that they're safe in their own homes and that the images they're seeing on TV are, are not necessarily the same things that they're seeing you know, locally as well. I think a lot of parents would like to know if this is being taught in schools and how teachers are uh, actually explaining this to the younger students and high schoolers. Do you have an opinion on that? And if so, how, how should they go about doing that? You know, I think for school, it's very similar to the conversations parents should be having at home. You know, of course, kids range in ages and, and when they do that, they range in their knowledge base of even history about past wars or past events. So for older kids, it can be easier for teachers to kind of tie current events to past events and use that as kind of a launching point for the conversation. Uh, for younger kids, it can be just about, again, asking them, you know, what questions do they have? What are they aware of? And just giving them that space to have a safe conversation in a safe place in school uh, can be very valuable in addition to having those conversations at home. All right, well, Dr. Ashley Zucker, we thank you once again for joining us this afternoon. Thank you and so much. You're welcome.